Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala seyyidina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in ve ala kulli men tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yemiddin. Allahümme allimna ma yenfa'una ve enfa'na bima allimtena ve zidna ilma. Subhanak Allahümme la ilme lana illa ma allimtena inneke entel alimin hakim. Ve ba'da Allahümme erina l-haqqa haqqa ve rızıkna tiba'ah. Ve erina l-batıla batıla ve rızıkna istinaba ve ba'd. Respected brothers and I think it's only sisters, I think. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and some of the brothers as well. I welcome all of you with apologies for a slight delay to this free webinar organized by Al Balagh Academy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward their efforts. Um, this is a just a very simple sort of session where we want to introduce the topic of the fiqh and fatawa of women, which is a course, the fiqh of women, which is a course that will sort of commence, commence uh, next week, inshallah ta'ala, as I've been told. So this is a introductory free webinar uh, <clears throat> designed for, for the sisters to explore the contemporary questions related, related to Muslim women's public and private life. Okay, um, inshallah in the next half hour or so, I will just try to uh, talk about certain issues which I feel are very important. And then, inshallah, what we'll do is we'll take some question answers, uh, some <clears throat> questions that you might have uh, in relation to this topic and the course that's going to be provided in the next few weeks. The fiqh and fatawa of women. The course that Al Balagh Academy has designed which has been delivered previous, in the previous years as well, which is the fiqh of women, and has various teachers who teach the full course, which is over a period of, I don't know how many weeks. I personally, alhamdulillah, honored to at least take a few, three, four different classes in this course and some topics that I, I also cover. There's other teachers as well, mashallah, who teach a lot of females involved as well. So this course relates to specifically issues. This course covers specifically issues that relate to our sisters, Muslim women, Muslim sisters. Now you might ask, why a special course? Why is there a need? Why a special course just for sisters? I mean, there's no, by the way, there's no presentation and uh, we don't have any slides today, etc. Uh, because this is just a lecture, like a, like a talk. Um, so <clears throat> normally we have slides, etc. on the screen. So you rather look at the screen than look at me, but uh, unfortunately you'll have to just look down there or somewhere. Um, so, why specifically a course designed for Muslim women and sisters? That's a question. I mean, whilst I was, I, just before this, I had a, Al-Balagh, alhamdulillah, offer different courses on different topics, different levels. This course is going to be level one, and then I think it goes to level two. I don't really know a lot of the details, but I have many sessions I teach as, as a teacher. Um, those who are in the admin department and uh, in charge of al Balagh will know further details and more details. But just before this, I actually taught for an hour and a half. I just finished about 20 minutes ago and then actually I, I was teaching at home the first session and then I thought I'd come in the office here uh, for, for this particular class because um, <clears throat> I had to come here as well anyway next to the masjid. But um, that was a course on business transactions. Uh, and uh, Islamic finance, an hour and a half. So whilst I was coming from there and driving to here, 
because this particular thought came to my mind that this is something that needs to be discussed. Why specifically a course for sisters? Why don't we have Al-Balagh Al Al -Bala Academy offers various courses and not just Al-Balagh Academy, everyone, all the different organizations, we offer courses on different topics. So we have a course on Islamic medical ethics in Al-Balagh Academy. This, this is a very old course on different levels and so many students, both brothers and sisters, male and female, men and women, have taken part in the fiqh of medicine and uh, a course level one, level two, level three, level four. We, we, you know, there's been courses that have been designed and courses have been offered on Islamic finance, on food, on halal, on the uh, And I don't even know, there's, there's so many other different courses that are offered. But you don't find a course, the fiqh of men, you don't have the course, the fiqh of elderly men, the fiqh of elderly or, or young, younger men or younger women, or, you know, it's not based, all the courses are based on topics. If you understand what I'm trying to say, all the courses are based on marriage, business, finance, halal, haram, food, zabiha, interest, riba, medicine, you know, for the people in the field of medication and, and, and in the medical field, for doctors, and there might be a course for lawyers, people in the legal, you know, uh, department. Uh, so courses are based on topics rather than gender of the person who's attending. All other courses, we have brothers and sisters who attend the courses. And this is throughout, everywhere in the world, generally, when you have books written as well, Books are written on topics. This is a book on Islamic finance. This is a book on marriage. This is a book on divorce. This is a book on family life. This is a book on salah. This is a book on modern issues to do with business and finance. This is a book on modern issues relating to medicine and treatment. It's not about the gender. This is the only course, especially for women, the fiqh of women. Now the men are going to complain. You now we have feminists and we have meminists. Mem mem you have feminists who complain about women not being treated well in the world. And you have now meminists who complain about men not being treated well and given equal treatment. All the men are going to start crying. This is not fair. What, what's so, you know, what, why, women, why are women so special that you have a special course for women? What have we done wrong? Where's our course gone? This is a question that could come into anyone's mind. Even when I talked about books, we have books on all these topics, but then there are specifically books written on just issues relating to women. Fatawa and Nisa, Fatawa for women. I have a book, I just, I just came right now, just one minute, I just wanted to go on to the... Uh, the shelf there, and just there's lots of Arabic books there. I just picked up this one. I just saw. It. Let me just, as an example, let me just pick one up. It's picked up. This is a book written in Arabic. Izalatul iltibas and hukmi libas al marati al muslima bayna al nisa. Especially women, fatawa and the rules and the ahkam and the injunctions and the guidelines and the laws relating to the libas, the dress of a Muslim woman. And this actually has been written by a female. This, this one has been written by a female. Al-Ustada, look at the name she's put on there. Al-Ustada Noon bint Muhammad, Noon. She didn't put her name, she just put Noon. I don't know what her first name is, but she felt like not wanting to give her full name, so she just put Noon. In some culture, she's a Syrian scholar. Uh, she's a expert on usul al-fiqh, sorry, uh, I don't know if she's originally Syrian, but she's, she teaches in Kuwait. Uh, and she's written a whole book in Arabic on this topic. Especially ahkam of libas just for women. Now, to answer this question, that why sometimes, why, Normally, 
courses, books, discussions are based on topics. But along with the topics, we always add the gender of women, books, especially for women, a course, especially for women. And you don't find that for the male gender or any other gender, if there is one. So why, especially, specifically for women? What is the answer? And this is what I want to explain in this few minutes that we have. The answer is simple. He said, we're just trying to make women happy. That's just a joke. But, you know, it could be sometimes, it could be some people, we just want to give importance to women because, you know, there's too many people saying that women are not given importance. So let's give more importance to women. Some people might have that idea that, you know, just especially for women, like, you know, make them feel that they're important uh, because people don't, you know, everything else. But the, the issue is that everything else is for men and women as well. And that's why some women, they might actually feel offended that why are you singling us out as important? Like you need to make someone feel important. See, the feminism is also of different degrees. Some, some feminists are so extreme level feminism that when you do something for them, they don't like that as well because they're trying to, they think that you're trying to make them feel as though that they weren't important and now you're making them important. It's a very sophisticated mind of feminism. They're like, why are you saying that we have a special... You know, you don't need to treat us special because we're, we're already special. So you're trying to say that we're not special now. You're just trying to be nice to us, you know, just, just. So some people do it for that reason. Another really important, so that's just, you know, some people do it. But the, the reason, the, there's two main reasons. One reason is that a lot of the times females don't have the opportunities, sadly so, they don't have the opportunities to take part in other study circles or, you know, the, the, they don't have as many opportunities where they can study. Uh, men generally have more opportunities now, whether that's right or wrong and what the reasoning behind that is as well and why there's not as much female scholarship as male scholarship, et cetera. That's a whole different discussion. But for this reason, a lot of times books are dedicated, courses are dedicated specifically for women so that this gives them a full chance because a lot of the times the teachers are males as well. And of course the male will always be around males and you know, there's more opportunities. I've been teaching for the past 15 years, uh, different places diff and so many times throughout the country and the different parts of the world, the common question or the common like complaint that comes from sisters is that, you know, while we don't get the opportunity, like, you know, uh, I've, I've traveled somewhere for three, four days in another country, we've you know, had course on a, a courses or a particular course on a different, on a particular topic. In between the course, you have brothers and sisters present and, and taking part in that course. But the sisters, they will ask questions in the designated Q&A. So, you know, we have like one hour question answers. They'll write their questions in just like the brothers. But the brothers have an added advantage is that, you know, in the breaks, you're going to Salah now or you're going to have tea or you're going to have lunch and the brothers are walking with you and they're talking with you and they're asking you. And so, and the sisters can't do that. So that's why then, a lot of these times people have a special designated, I remember I've been to Toronto, Canada many times, and every time I go there, they have a special designated one hour lecture specifically just for sisters, no brothers allowed, only for sisters, and an exclusive Q&A for sisters, so that they have full time. So that's one of the reasons. And another reason which I feel, which is a really, really important reason is, this is actually a good reason, and then the, the main reason, is that we find that sisters have generally, this is a really good quality, have more zeal generally, uh, you know, to learn about deen and they have more interest. A lot of the times we offer courses, I'm not just talking about Al-Balagh, but generally in the world, even physically before COVID, I mean, inshallah, and hopefully COVID ends and we are able to travel again and go to different places. But when I used to travel and then when I used to go to different places and all the courses, you always have double the amount of sisters than the brothers. The sisters are there, they're on time, they're punctual, they're more passionate, they, they want to learn more about deen. So when someone is more eager to learn about deen and more you know, interested and more passionate about 
something, then you give them more exclusivity and give them more time. And that is probably one of the reasons why a lot of times, you know, a lot of organizations have exclusive webinars or seminars or courses or classes or special time lectures, programs, especially, especially dedicated to sisters, because there's, there's, you, they feel that there's more interest and they feel that there's more desire and more sort of desire and this eagerness to learn about Deen. And another reason that comes to mind as well, before I go to the main reason, is that these are reasons just coming to my mind right now. Another reason is that maybe sisters, and the, one of the reasons is that sisters, because of the nature of their responsibilities and because of the nature of what they do in life, and subhanAllah, they do a lot and they do much more uh, you know, in most cases than men, you know, because they have to juggle between outside life and work as well, and then bringing up children and then being a mom and being a, you know, a wife. And I mean, the man is being a husband as well. So let's leave that one out, okay. But being a mom, but then the man is being a father as well. But, but there is a difference. Of course, the man, you see, we have to be careful here because, you know, this, when we say this, this, this is a problem. It's a double-edged sword. It's a problem on two, two in this current climate. It's a double problem. Like I was saying, the men can complain that, you know, they're being women. They are mothers, so aren't we not fathers? They're wives, so are we not husbands? So the men, the feminists can complain, but even more so, the extreme super feminists can complain because they don't want to, like, these, I've read feminism quite a lot, and honestly, they, they, subtle, subtle things they get offended by. It's crazy. It's like, you know, sometimes you say something good or something about women, or they get more offended with, with that because they think that means we were not good. Like, why do you have to specially tell us that, you know, you're, you're, you're a good person or you're doing good? You know, we're, we're normal, just like men. You don't go and tell men that this is, they, they think that it's an indirect way of thinking that, you know, you're, you know, we're lower than the male gender. But anyway, that's a topic on its own and feminism is a topic that we can talk about another time. But this is there's no denying of the fact that women do have a greater role to play with children especially when the children are young this is you know general understanding look men are fathers as well women are mothers as well but children when they are young then they need their mother more the role of the mother is greater than the role of the father when they are older then the role of the father is more than the, than the role of the mother this is why islamic child custody laws are based on this concept when there's a divorce and separation for example between the husband and the wife um, islamic child custody laws are such that when the children are young they stay with the mother whether it's a boy or a girl when they're young they stay with the mother why because the child needs the mother more there's breastfeeding i mean there's no denying of the fact that the man doesn't breastfeed yeah no i don't think any man breastfeeds so unless you know there's another Equal equality movement wanting to say that it's not fair that you know why only women uh, breastfeed and why men not. I mean, the world is crazy nowadays. But anyway, so that in itself they have they have to give time for that you know and they have to childbirth itself. This is this is clear fact. Men don't give birth to children. Men are not pregnant for nine nine months or eight months or whatever. You know. So this whole this is what the Quran said. Um, you know, the, the 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 mother goes through so many stages before the man even starts his role. Three roles. This is why the hadith that when the companion said, "Oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, man ahaqul nasi bi husni suhbati." Who deserves my good treatment? He said, "Your mother, ummak. Then who? Ummak. Thumma man, ummak." Thumma abak, then your father. Three times your mother. Many scholars have explained this to say that because the mother plays three massive roles, three stages she goes undergoes before the man even comes into the picture. Number one, which is pregnancy. Number two, childbirth in itself is a massive, takes a massive toll on a woman. And number three, breastfeeding. And then after that, the man you know, takes on his role. So these things are there and this prevents women this prevents women to, well it doesn't prevent sorry it doesn't give them as much opportunity to sort of study you know when she's pregnant this is why allah gives holidays to women as well every month what's the holiday when when a woman is on her menstrual period you've got eight nine ten days of holidays from prayer and from fasting if it's ramadan you make up for the fast but you don't make up for the prayer you know the holidays this is what we call a holiday why because why, why the man wasn't given a holiday? These are real issues of differences. In Islam, there is similarity, there is similarity, there is equality. Sorry. In Islam, there is equality between men and women, but there is no similarity. There is dissimilarity. 
And a lot of the times in the world today, we confuse these two things. Equality, inequality is one thing. Similarity, dissimilarity is something else. There is definitely equality between men and women. The, the, there is definitely equality between men and women. And Allah says, we treat men and women equally. But there is no denying of the fact that men and women are different. There are different genders. There are different, you know, emotionally they are different. Psychologically they are different. Physically they are different. Biologically they are different. Their mindset is different. Their roles are different. And because of the, the differences in their characteristics and because of the way their nature, their minds, and, and the physical differences and the emotional differences, Allah has assigned different roles. The man's role is different, that's suited to the man. The woman's role is different. The job and task and responsibilities for a woman is different based on the way Allah created women. So because of that, the woman's responsibilities when children are young, when children are uh, uh, you know, growing up, when she's breastfeeding, you know, like for example, when she's she might not able to study as much the man is going around doing his normal business when the woman is his wife is pregnant and the man doesn't take the, the woman takes off time from work for nine months, eight months, seven months. The man doesn't. He might take a few weeks out just to be by the side of his wife and help her, but he's not physically carrying the child. So he doesn't, so he can do things as he wants. And then childbirth time and then breastfeeding time. And then first few years, the mother spends more time. So these kind of things, all these roles and activities prevents uh or, sorry, not again the word prevent, but reduces the chances of a woman taking part and learning as much as a man can and the chances of the man and the opportunities that the man has. And this is why we need specific, exclusive, you know, time given to women that, look, you might have missed out because of all those different things. Here's your time to learn. So these are just some small, small reasons. And the main reason time is, I mean, I just went on to this uh, discussion of this. I don't know, sometimes I just go on a topic and I carry on. But the main reason, the main reason, and this is what I want to talk about, why we have a discussion specifically, a course specifically, a book written specifically, a, a dedicated department for discussing the issues of women, why we need to study the fiqh and fatawa relating to women is because of the nature of the rules prescribed in Sharia. Ah. Generally, the rules that are given apply both to men and women. This is my main reason. They apply both to men and women. Like when Allah says, offer salah. Salah is for both men and women. Five-time prayers, both men and women. Fasting, for men, for women. Zakat, for men, for women. Hajj, men, women. So all the rules of Hajj will be studied by men and women. All the rules of Zakat will be studied by men and women. Of course, there might be differences in those rules, so like, for example, uh, how to pray, for example, the women rules about praying might be slightly different to the men, the rules relating to women, uh, the men, how to pray, uh, like, for example, menstrual menstruation as well. So then she's forgiven to pray, like I just mentioned, there might be some rules about certain things in Hajj that the men do differently from women and women do differently from men. Uh, marriage is for men and women. So if you if there's a course on marriage, for example, it's for men, for women. But yes, of course, the rules will be slightly different. Some things that the men need to learn. And, but it's similar. It's similar, like equal amounts of things that they both have to learn. So if you look at all the other courses, they are general for men and women. But the nature that Allah has made women is that there are added rules for women. Why? Because that's how Allah chose, you know, there are added rules, specific added rules for women in our deen, in our sharia, you know, there are added rules, there are added guidelines, because, because maybe so, Allahu alam, because women play a massive role, maybe because maybe, you know, uh, it, you know, the, the way Allah, you know, created women and, and, you know, more precious, more rules, more, I'm just trying to make this, this happy, the feminist movement happy, maybe more precious, you know, the more, more someone is more important, the more, you know, guidelines and the more rules are attached to that gender. And, you know, because this, there's more injunctions and rules and guidelines. So this is the nature of our deal. Every other topic for men, women, you don't have any specific things, like there's no specific chapter that there's one ibadah that's just for men. When we say salah, salah is for men and women. Yes, there's something specific for men, if you understand the difference. Salah is for both men and women, but there are something specific for men, but there are something specific for women in salah as well. So that balances itself out. 
So salah, saum, zakat, hajj, all these rules are for both genders. But when it comes to women, there are some extra things. Topics on its own, extra things. Like for example, menstruation. Men don't experience menstruation. Now that's an extra chapter, fiqh of women. Menstrual periods, hayd, a very, very important topic that you really need to learn about. It's, it's very, it can get very, very complicated. Nifas, postnatal bleeding, ble uh, bleeding after, or the, uh, after the birth of a child. And istihada, Quranic uh, bleeding. This is a whole chapter, there's books on this topic, a dedicated chapter of rules of rules exclusively for women. They don't apply to men. Okay, so that, that's a whole area and branch which is relating to women, which doesn't, there's nothing of that topic. There's nothing from that topic that relates to men. Nothing. There's nothing in that topic of menstruation, nifas, and istihada that, oh, some rules are for men, some rules are for women. This is exclusively a branch, a topic, a subject which relates to females. Another example, and some of these things will be covered in this course. Another example, beautification. Now, beautification, this is a specific topic, topic for women. Why? Because Islam has encouraged women to adorn themselves and beautify themselves, not men. You know, we have three stages. We have the stage of tahara. Tahara is purity. Yeah. Before salah, we'll have chapter on purity. Wudu, ghusl, making sure that, you know, you wash yourself after urinating and after that, how to take a ghusl and how to take a bath and how to cleanse yourself and istinja and um, tayammum, dry ablution and najasa, you know, on your body, clothes, uh, you know, all these things, especially tahara for ibadah, for salah, etc. Uh, state of impurity, janaba, sexual relations, you know, these type of topics. Um, so that tahara is for both men and women. And that's why when we study tahara, it's for both men and women. Then there's a next level, which is nadafa. Tahara is basic purity, state of purity, performing wudu, ablution, ghusl, um, and making sure that there's no blood, urine, sperm, etc. discharge on your body. This is for both men and women. Then you get a second stage, which is nadafa, which is cleanliness. You could be pure you could acquire tahara but not um nadafa nadafa is cleanliness so basically i'm pure i've got wudu and i don't have any uh blood or anything on my body or urine anything like that nudges but i have curry and i have you know like my my Clothes are filthy dirty you know all the stains and curry stains and i smell etc so that's, nadafa is cleanliness. That's a second level. And there's rules for nadafa of clean, making sure that your body is clean, your clothes are clean, and your house is clean, and your room is clean. And, you know, this is for both men and women as well. But then there's a third stage. And that third stage is called the stage of, of tahalli, adornment. The stage of adornment, tahalli which is beautification adornment. This is discouraged, actually sinful to an ex if you go to an extent for men. Beautification is not for men. Men are not supposed to become women here. Men are not supposed to put makeup and stand next to a mirror and you know spend two hours in front of the mirror beautifying themselves. They do tahara and they do nawafa. That's about it. But that third level is specifically for women. Why for women? It's just natural. I mean, and it's built, it's naturally built. It's the way Allah created. I mean, even if you look at young children, nah, it's subhanAllah, it's so just amazing that Allah, the way Allah created, you know, I have a son and a daughter. You can see it's just built in. You know, my daughter, she's, a, she's seven now, I think. Yeah. 
she wants she's so con con concerned about you know but you know that my hair will go this way or do i have to put no but this one doesn't look good or this you know in my head and like i don't want to wear this because my friends do i look at it or this my son is he wears anything or whatever he doesn't care anything but she's just so worried it's from a young age built in allah is khaliq this is why when we talk about feminism we say that look who created men who created women he knows best what is required by each gender he is the khaliq so leave it to the khaliq he knows how he created women he knows that beautification is something only for women so therefore now all the rules of beautification will apply only to what time is it only to women so women, women will not want to know about cosmetics about uh, creams about surgery about adornment about makeup about eyeliners about fake uh, you know eyelashes will want to know about uh, colored contact lenses uh, jewelry uh, gold jewelry silver jewelry jewelry is haram for men men are not supposed to wear jewelry it's absolutely haram for, for you know men wearing earrings all of that that's haram that there's no rules for men in there you just don't wear it just doesn't apply to you you stick with your tahara and stick with your nadafa stay clean neat tidy as a presentable good man and that's it you know you don't have to start going and putting makeup on uh, on and stuff like that and try to beautify yourself as a man just it looks really bad on a man as well and even for women if you overdo it, it looks bad anyway but beautification to an extent is specifically for women i've given you two examples and this is why women have additional rules and this is the reason the fundamental reason why we need to have special courses And then another third example here, which is, I didn't want to use this as an example, but let's use it as examples because people think that this is, you know, an additional ruling, but it's not really an additional ruling, but in like this book that was written, Libasul Mar'a, a special fatawa and books on the topic of libas, covering. Now, that's one of the sessions that I do, actually. Uh, and I actually explain that because a lot of times I, I wouldn't use that as an example as an exclusive special rules for women because even men have those rules. Yes, there's a reason why we give it more, you know, like more dedication to when it comes to women because the rules, this is like an example where there are rules for both men and women, but because the rules of women are so much more than the men, it kind of becomes like a topic that is only for women. If you've understood what I'm saying, let me repeat that again. Like Salah, there's rules for men and women. So we don't say, you know, special rules. Salah is not an example where you need to talk about the rules of women separately because both men and women have been given the rules. But the rules of dress code, because the rules for women are much more this is also, dress code is also something which is common between men and women. There are rules for men and there are rules for women. When we talk about that, I'll say that, look, hijab is not just a woman thing. Hijab means a barrier and there's a set of laws that Islam gives. And these set of laws that Islam gives is for both men and women. There are certain laws Allah has given, commanded, and certain rules and injunctions for men and certain rules for women. So men have certain laws and rules like men can't go around naked, the man's aura is from the navel to the knees, has to cover, the man can't wear things which are so tight and see through and tight jeans that you can see the figure and shape of his of his thighs, etc. Uh, the, the man can't be with a, another woman in khalwa, the man can't do this. And there's rules for men as well. But the rules for women are far more and that's why it looks like that these are exclusive rules for women because they're much more. Why much more? Because again, Allah created women and Allah, the rules of dress, the rules of cover, the women have to cover much more. You know, the rules of hijab, the rules of niqab, the full body being covered. Uh, and then all the, also intermingling with the opposite gender. But again, that applies to men as well. Just like women, men are not supposed to intermingle with women freely and casually. Women are not supposed to intermingle freely, casually with men. So this is something that applies to both. So this is a topic where sometimes it's presented as though it's a women thing that only women need to wear and women need to cover and women need to do this. Well, men need to cover as well. You can't have men naked. You know, women, you wear the niqab and wear everything and men, you know, you just go around naked everywhere. 
Of course not. Men, you guys need to also cover. You have rules as well. But we'll talk about that when the turn comes, inshallah, if I have that session. But anyway, so these are certain examples um, of issues that require special dedication. And this is why we have a separate discussion on the fiqh and fatawa of women. There's lots of examples. Now, just to finish off, and then we'll take some questions. Um, all these issues that come about, um, because there are new rules and separate rules, takes time. I mean, I've been, you know, even on, I have a website, not, not the Al-Balaag website, but I have my own website, which, sorry, my phone fell down, um, which is darrifta.com. I mean, maybe I'll just show it here. Uh, no, there's no, there is share screen. Okay. Just, just to give you some, uh, like an example. Uh, just one minute, just to give you an example of, uh, Women issues. I'll just two minutes on this and then we'll take question answers. Okay. Um, where is it gone? Share screen. Uh, I think the screen has come up. Okay. This is my website, darlifta.com, okay? Uh, I just wanna just show you here, all answers, and then I think we have, yeah, look, browse answers, yeah? Look, aqida, sacred knowledge, aqida for both men and women, sacred knowledge for both men and women, tahara purity, both men and women, salah, both men and women, zakat, both men and women, saum, men and women, hajj, men and women, business and trade, men and women. Marriage, men and women. Talaq, divorce, men and women. Food and drink, only men. Women don't eat, sorry, for both men and women. Death and burial, only men die. No, men and women both die. Inheritance, men and women. And then women's issues. Where's the men's issues? This, where's the men's? I, I've actually thought, I've never spoken about this, but even when we made this website, this is about 15 years old website, like we've been having, this thought has crossed my mind. No, why not men's issues? This is the first time I'm actually talking about this in this way. Then miscellaneous for both men and women. Women issues, what are the men's issues? Why do we have to have women's issues? So like I've explained, I don't know how many reasons that just came to my mind randomly. The main one I had thought about, but before that, those three, four other reasons I mentioned. So the main reason is that there, there's extra rules for women, but those other reasons as well. Now, if you look at women's issues, okay, uh, These are women's 22 so far here, ruling on various types of vaginal discharge. Now, this is something specific to women as well. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it? Yeah, women's issues. Look, plucking, trimming, shaping, shaving. I've talked about this in a lot of detail. This is one of my fatwas I wrote a detailed explanation. This is part of beautification, part of beautification. So it only applies to women. Fake eyelashes, part of beautification. Women exposing the arms whilst driving. Now that's part of the dress code, which is for men and women. But like I said, this dress code issues, because there's lots of rules for women, it looks like that it's a specific, you know. Um, then again, uh, aura issues. Uh, there's some things here, you know, or do, do, do old women have to wear hijab, piercing of body parts. So you'll see it's either part of cosmetics and beautification, or it's part of, you know, dress code and hijab, etc. cetera. Uh, female voice and singing, permanent body hair removal for women, women cutting their hair, breastfeeding during pregnancy. Look, now that's specific for women. Female Islamic dress code, uh, rings made of, you know, status of wearing a jilbab, women seeking medical treatment from male doctors. Traveling without a mahram, comprehensive guide to a woman's nakedness. So this is just an example of certain issues. Uh, and we take a lot of time out to look at these issues and research them and then come to sort of some conclusions, inshallah. So this was just a summary. Uh, and inshallah, as the course will be presented and will be covered over the next few weeks, um, I don't really know uh, how many teachers there are and how many weeks in total you'll be told and what the exact topics are. But inshallah, um, 
it will be good if you can take part and uh, you know uh, undergo this course inshallah ta'ala